Hi, I'm Rachel Masters and I am the harpist with the London Philharmonic. Hi, my name is Vanilla Ward and I am the pianist on the Foil Future First scheme this year with the London Philharmonic Orchestra. I had never heard of it. I'd never even heard of the composer, which is really yeah. cool. On piano, usually you kind of heard of all the <laughs> usual and you don't, it's rare that you hear something like this performed on a big stage with a big orchestra. It's really, really cool to listen to something completely fresh and just listen and you don't have any kind of preconceptions of what it should sound like and you're really yeah. just listening to it as it happens it's really really cool so what did you think what was your impression you know what was the the first thing you thought yeah well I, I listened to it completely straight with I I really like to google what the piece is about and stuff but I was like no I'm gonna listen to it without knowing anything and it was just a really like striking beginning and um it's really intense and it kind of made me feel a bit it was a bit like anxiety a bit anxious and very very dramatic um <laughs> in a really cool the, way yeah it's, yeah it's I mean I agree because I I am um, obviously I'd played it but I've never yeah. been out front listening to it so it was really good to get a different perspective on it and mm. um you know how she plays those lots of sort of octave figurations yeah, at the beginning, it, 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 and then it's not quite an octave and you think is that oh is that intentional <laughs> Yeah, but I look at so the score. And so that sort of feels certain tension. I mean, you realise it is totally intentional. Yeah. <laughs> but but, <laughs> but you know, that kind it, of makes, it makes you kind of go, is it, oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Like, yeah. And then yeah. later on, something else will happen. You'll be like, oh, is that? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. you're kind of, well, I was on the edge of my seat a bit listening to it because yeah. you, know, yeah, and you don't know what's what's coming because you haven't heard it before. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it was fab. I really liked it. It really made me think of, um, I think it made those feelings quite intense. It reminded me of like film music. And I, I thought up, that. Yeah. I thought it was. I I I thought to myself, if I close my eyes, this would make great film music. Yeah, like a chase scene or yeah, like something. Yeah. yeah. And then um, I looked up about Elena Katz turning, and she yeah, does film too. music. So yeah, it's definitely. Did you know? Like, did you know she did the Lloyd's <laughs> Bank advert? No. What? Oh, 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 that one. No. Yeah. It's really I famous. That. I had the piano music for that when I was a teenager because I thought I bought it. I thought it was so cool. Well, no. she did that. That's that song. It's called um, oh Eliza Aria or something. Yeah, I had yeah. that. I got it in a charity yeah. shop. Yeah. What? Wow. I mean, there you okay. go. <laughs> I can see that now. Now I think about the piece. I'm like, yeah. I don't know because if you think if you hear these things and then you're like, oh, I can definitely hear that. But wow. Is it a difficult piece? As, as speaking as a pianist, you know, mm. would it be, would it be, is it, is it a very hard piece to play? Well, I looked at the score online, I followed it through, and there are big stretches of it that are technically quite simple, like the second movement. But again, that is technically it's easy to play the notes, but then to, with this repeated thing, it's so much repeated rhythms, and it's so easy to make that boring. And to kind of lose the line and you can just kind of be like mm, same thing but she really carried it really well there are then some passages that again it's so changeable then that it'll run into like a big like crazy bit that you would have to really sit down and work out um mm. yeah but it was quite cool in the in the score there's lots of ad lib bits where she's written oh, really? out several notes maybe in a chord and it has a little pattern and then it'll say ad lib for x amount of bars oh, so I like that yeah, I love that. It would be different every a time. Bit of autonomy, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I bet she was like, oh, thank God. Like, I can just. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there were some lovely, just you mentioned on the, you touched on the second movement there. Mm. There were some lovely um, sweeping legato lines, weren't there? Yes, beautiful. Picking and in the wind woodwind. Was, yeah. 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 Um, Gorgeous. It, it was, ooh, you know. <laughs> I love when a composer can write all this kind of crazy rhythmic sort of textural stuff but then they can write a really good tune as well yeah that's yeah. that's film music kind of style you can just yeah. bring out a really beautiful melody yeah. and just, yeah it was really gorgeous it was very dramatic because at the end I mean obviously that the, the, this the, the as far as I could understand the, the first movement ran directly into the second movement with this chord on the tubular bells yes and there'd been all this activity and all of a sudden you know a yeah. big chime four I think and nothing yeah. else happened and then complete change of mood I thought that was very dramatic yeah well reading mm. about um what the piece was about because again I wanted to 
listen to it through having no, knowing nothing because that's such a that's such a treat I think yeah and yeah. then I looked up what it was about and I, I do love whenever a piece has a real has an actual story and she wrote it about Bach's first wife who no one really knew much about and when he was 35 he came home he'd left he went on like a six-week tour or trip and then he came back to find that she was dead and had been buried while he was away the mad like grief at the start and that shock and then at the end is the these kind of funeral bells and then I think the five movements are kind of like the stages of grief it's oh. amazing when I when I read up about it I thought wow this is a incredible piece in a piece like this I think you can go into it not knowing anything about what the piece is about or knowing about orchestral performances or anything and um, because the I think that the movements are also different and they really have um, a different emotion attached to each of them that you might not be a musician, but everybody's human. And I think anybody could come off the street and listen to it or sit down at home with a cup of tea and listen to it yeah. um, on YouTube yeah. and feel those feelings as they come about. Mm. Because music isn't just to make you feel happy or make you feel um like joyful or anything it is also there to make you feel different emotions I think that's really important especially in times like these yes. I think listening to that um I've ha been having problems with my anxiety and actually listening to a piece that was really anxious kind of gave it a bit of a channel and let me just live in it for a, what five ten minutes well I think and that's, then the power, the next that, one. that's the power yeah. of music because it, it, it gets it gets people more in touch with their feelings absolutely I mean, that's the whole thing isn't it 